an historic voter turnout. More than 7 million people voted in the Afghan presidential poll on Saturday. Across the country, people braved threats of violence to cast their ballot for their next leader. Current President Hamid Karzai called the elections a success. Partial results are expected as soon as Sunday. We're joined live by our correspondent Sean Calips, who's in Kabul with the latest. Sean, a big day for Afghanistan. How did everything go today? Yeah, I think it's a very landmark day. I think everybody is saying the election went as well as anyone could have hoped. There were, of course, hundreds of scattered uh, attacks throughout the country, but for the most part, everything went off peacefully, especially here in the capital uh, city. Uh, people here were uh, very thrilled to go out to the polls. They came out in big numbers, and it's, a, it's, it's going to be significant because this is going to have a lot of impact on bringing international aid continued into this country. It may have felt a bit more like a police state than a democracy, but on this day, no one complained about the heavy police presence. Afghanistan's head of the International Election Commission beamed while casting his ballot. It's a very good day for me and for all the Afghans. And I wish all the Afghan people, my countrymen, come out and vote for their favorite country. This is, a, this is the day to prove themselves uh, with their vote. Unafraid and embracing the first peaceful democratic transfer of power, Afghans waited in long lines. A so-called ring of steel keeping voters safe, despite repeated Taliban threats that attacks would disrupt the vote. Without facing bad security situations and polling stations, we are proud to... ...is the end of a very long journey for these Afghan voters. The next step, dip their finger in this ink. They'll then make their way over to pick up the ballot, come back here cast that vote in secrecy, and then the very last step, deposit it in this sealed ballot box. As you can see, lots of women are here to vote because they want to live in peace with their family and their children. They want their children to be educated here and to work for their country. All the big names in Afghanistan made a show of voting. The outgoing president, as well as the frontrunners, Ashraf Ghani, Abdullah Abdullah, and Zelme Rasul. But the real winners here could be the Afghan people. If the people of Afghanistan want Afghanistan to stand up or rise up like other countries, they should choose their president. Furthermore, the election must happen the proper way. With tight security, Kabul escaped the Taliban threat unfazed. But this is just the first step. Votes must be counted, fraud must be avoided, and for the Taliban, there's always tomorrow. Well, the uh, vote, uh, any winner needs at least 50 percent of the vote, and there are three perceived front runners uh, in this election. Peacefully, it went off because 200,000 Afghan troops and police fanned out across uh, this country. Asya, I can tell you, when we went out to that polling station, we had to get through three separate checkpoints once we got to the station just to get inside to speak with the people. Security was tight, but in the long run, it paid off in a big way. Wow. Well, I want to ask you a question about the women of Afghanistan, Sean. They have endured so much. What is, what is their hope and aspiration? It's interesting because we, uh, if you saw in the story, we did speak at length uh, with that last woman. And she said that she started out working for the government. Now she's a housewife. You're exactly right. She says she has endured so much. And despite the threat, uh, she said she was going out in the face of the Taliban to cast her vote. There have been significant strides in this country for women, uh, girls, especially education. And if this vote would have been hampered by violence, would have been hampered by widespread fraud, it could have had a chilling effect, perhaps cut back the foreign aid that is going to continue to come into this country. Uh, a few years ago, there were uh, basically no girls in school. Now there are millions. Uh, this could be the start of a new country, but... Let's not get ahead of ourselves. There is a lot of work left to go. And when you talk to the Afghan people, do they honestly and truly believe this election will make a difference? Yeah, I think so. I think that is one thing we are hearing. Look, in 2009, only 4.5 million people turned out to vote. 
and it was characterized by fraud, ballot stuffing, all kinds of problems. And 20 percent of the vote had to be thrown out. This time it was different. There were Afghans running the country. There were Afghans uh, controlling all the security. There were Afghans leading the election push. It wasn't an international effort. It was very, very uh, country driven. And that's a big source of pride for the Afghans. And they think this is a big step forward. The big thing everybody wants to chip away at is corruption. It has tainted Karzai's administration, and if this country is going to have a decent chance, they must prove they can go forward without this kind of uh, widespread fraud that has just uh, invaded every nook and cranny in this country. And I heard the weather wasn't too great today. There was rain, long lines, so, and the threat of Taliban, of course, and it seems none of those things really kept voters away. Yeah, you know, the big, they had a number of attacks last week. There were uh, three separate attacks here in Kabul, and of course, a horrific attack at Host on Friday that claimed the life of uh, an AP award winning photographer as well as injuring her reporter. Uh, there were, of course, concerns about the Taliban, but the security was incredibly tight. They were stopping any large trucks from coming in on the main roads that feed into this capital city and driving around. The streets were almost vacant because there was so much uh, security out there. Uh, they were stopping, checking people, looking at IDs, looking in the trunks, doing everything they could to inspect vehicles. As for the weather, the weather, yeah, it was cold. It did rain. Actually, even hailed a little bit later in the day here, but that's nothing compared to what these people in this country have been through. Sean Caleb's live in Kabul. Thank you so much.